Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. Today, our devotion is in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Saul has been, in the past, disobedient to the Word of God, and God has spoken through Samuel against this disobedience and saying that his reign will be temporary. But here he has another opportunity, and I would like to read the first three verses of chapter 15 to uh, bring our attention to this. Then Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you as king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he set himself against him on the way while he was coming up from Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and utterly destroy all that he has, and do not spare him, but put to death both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Now some upon hearing this might think, well, that's kind of harsh. It seems kind of extreme. But we learn two things here that are very important to us today. First of all, God greatly is greatly concerned about the progress of his people, and he is very passionate about dealing with whatever is in their way. We need to understand that God's desire for us is to make progress towards his promises. Here, the people of Amalek stood in the way of that progress, and so he wanted to eradicate them completely. The second thing we see is that God does see things that we don't necessarily see in detail and clarity. So he realized that not only needed, did they need to be destroyed, but their entire support system along with it. So Samuel instructs Saul with these things, and Saul responds by assembling the army, setting up an ambush, and then when we come to verse 6, he tells the Canaanite people who were people who actually assisted Israel in their journey, that they needed to separate themselves so as not to be caught up in the destruction of the Amalekites. After doing this, it says in verse 7, So Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah as you go to Shur, which is in east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were not willing to destroy them utterly, but everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. We see here Saul in direct disobedience to God's word. But what was it that caused him to be so disobedient that he would keep the king, of Agag, uh, the king Agag of the Amalekites alive and allow his men to take the best of the sheep and oxen and the various animals? I believe it was clear that his ego was in the way. The greed was in the way. And these things blinded him from seeing what God saw and the need to utterly destroy these things. So we find that Samuel is informed by God in verse 10 about Saul's disobedience and that he's going to remove him from being king over Israel. Samuel is so distressed that he cries out to God in prayer and in intercession all night. And it says in verse 12, Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul. And it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he has set up a monument for himself, then turned and proceeded on down to Gilgal. One of the symptoms that we see in the church even today of disobedience to God under the guise of obedience is that they're more passionate about receiving honor for themselves than they are for worshiping God. Before Saul proceeds to the place of worship, he establishes a place where he is honored with a memorial. So Samuel comes to him in verse 13. Let's read there. Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have carried out the command of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of oxen which I hear? Saul said, 
I have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest we have utterly destroyed. Fascinating to me here is that after the reproof, reproof comes to Saul with great clarity, uh, Saul excuses himself and says he blames the people for taking the best of the sheep. And then he defends them by saying, well, they did it with a good motive. You know, it's amazing how we can excuse our disobedience, but we need to be careful lest we be patting ourselves on the back for what is in God's eyes clearly a disobedience. We must be careful that we aren't guilty of you allowing our greed and our egos to get in the way of full and complete obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not think that we can, in partial obedience, be pleasing to God. Let me pray with you about this. Father, we come to you today that we would have the ability through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to see with clarity that you are one who is greatly concerned for our progress. You are one who sees what hinders it. And we need to trust your perception and your word and your instruction to us to entirely remove everything that will impede our progress to your promises. God, forgive us if we have jumped in our greed and jumped in our egos to establish our own names. But Lord, we want to be uh, among those who will humbly obey God in its completeness, completeness so that we will make the progress that you desire for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. We pray that you will have a great day and the Lord will be with you always.